Economic Debt released by the Gambia Bureau of Statistics a month ago indicates that the gross domestic product of the country has experienced a 4.3 percent growth. Now, the rise in GDP proportionally estimate signifies a recovery of the economy from shocks caused by the adverse effects of the pandemic. As such, the economy is in line with the regional and global trend. However, the final economic outlook of the 2021 is expected to be released in April next year. Moses Himende tells us more of that in this report. When the COVID-19 pandemic broke out in 2019, it unleashed severe implications on world economies, including the Gambia. The country largely depends on agro-product exports for revenue generation. But the impact of the global health crisis disrupted trade in the sub-region, causing an economic shock. The tourism sector, which is also a feeder for the Gambia's economy, was one of the hardest hit industries during the peak of the pandemic. Tourists could no longer visit the small West African country, which severely dampened the industry's performance. But after a rough period, the Gambia has now begun to see light at the end of the tunnel, with a 4.3% growth of its GDP thanks to high official remittances and agricultural growth. Speaking at the country's second economic update at Sadauda Kairaba Jawara Conference Center, economist Ashraf said the growth is enough to eradicate extreme poverty and improve prosperity in the country but not as much as Gambians will prefer, cautioning that the Ukraine war will weigh on the recovery. Will this growth help reduce poverty, and for that matter, extreme poverty, and improve prosperity in the country? It will, and we have seen poverty declining in 2021 thanks to recovering labor markets, but not to the extent that we'd like to see. What needs to be done? And uh, or, or even before going there, what are the headwinds to the near and medium term outlook for the Gambia? Many, chiefly being the war in Ukraine and its impact on global food, fuel, fertilizer, supply chains and prices, which will dampen the recovery and economic outlook for the Gambia. C.D. Keita, Minister of Finance, observed that the Ukraine war is a test to the country's impressive route trajectory but assured that education and health will remain atop the government's priority list. He said the report will be used by the government to ensure effective policy design and implementation through adoption of data-driven policy formulation. Echo an important aspect of this report, the significance of timely and accurate data to aid and enhance human capital and ensure effective policy design and implementation. Uh, we are increasingly focused on data-driven policy formulation and going forward both the government and all the ministry will use data very extensively to ensure that all policy pronouncements and policy directions are supported by a robust data in order to guide decisions. This report will serve as a guide to a comprehensive review of our policies with keen focus on recent economic developments and our economic outlook. He believes that building resilient economic policies from robust data is the perfect answer to the shocks as he looks forward to the implementation of the economic report recommendations to promote macroeconomic development. When quizzed about the government's plan to create inclusive jobs for women and young people in the aftermath of the pandemic, he answered saying that the Ministry of Finance will ensure that the macroeconomic framework and policies are conducive towards fostering a private sector-led growth and also diversify the economy. He however recognized the concentrated nature of the country's economy as a challenge. Nathan Mbelete, World Bank Country Director, revealed the bank's desire to work with the government to improve the economy. He then spoke on the importance of government's intervention in responding to the needs of the poor and vulnerable during crisis. 
we still believe that there's a strong role, an important role for the government to play in safety nets, in providing support to the poor and the vulnerable, because during these times, particularly in times when we see such high inflation, the first group to get impacted is the poor and the vulnerable. And uh, for that reason, we will continue to work uh, closely with the authorities to do whatever we can to help mitigate these impacts. Mr. Belete highlighted the tourism and agricultural sector as two areas where tremendous opportunities lie for the country and assured the World Bank's support to invest in these two areas. The release of the World Bank annual report took place amid the conflict in Ukraine, whose spillover is being felt worldwide. The report, therefore, shares policy suggestions on addressing structural challenges that can help the country. It also stressed that evidence-based and data-driven policy making will be key to raising the sustainable long-term growth potential of Gambia's economy. Moses Mendy, iAfrica News.